thank, first of all, the Crosstown Hotel for, uh, for welcoming us here today, for hosting this event, this talk, this discussion about U.S.-Armenian relations. We picked this venue for a very specific reason, which you, which you can see uh, in this photo here. Uh, 20 years ago, in February 1992, uh, Steve Mann and former Foreign Minister uh, Rafi uh, opened the U.S. Embassy, uh, the first U.S. Embassy in the Republic of Armenia, uh, on four floors, on the eighth floor, uh, uh, four rooms, sorry, uh, on the eighth floor of this very building. My predecessor in those early years, uh, Tom Price, right after Steve Mann, he remembers all too well. Oh, Bruce is here. Welcome, Bruce. <laughs> uh, my predecessor remembers how many floors there are in this hotel because when he was here in 1992, Armenia, as you remember, experienced serious electricity problems and he would get stuck in the elevator. One day he was stuck in the elevator about two and a half hours and he decided that it was best to walk up and down those eight, flower, eight, eight floors uh, of eight uh, stairways uh, to get to and from the office. So he's told me he remembers very well that there are eight floors in the Rosdown Hotel. We uh, have a great setup now. I've got a great view, great location, great embassy. Uh, so we are very much better situated. The embassy is here in Yerevan than we were back in those old days in 1992. Uh, with US recognition, with our recognition of the new Republic of Armenia and the establishment of this embassy on the eighth floor, we launched our formal bilateral relationship. But the American people, many Americans, felt an emotional uh, commitment, an emotional connection to Armenia several years before we opened this embassy. The December 1988 Spitak earthquake brought to American homes some heart-rending images of people in need. Every Armenian that I've talked to about this tragedy remembers precisely where he or she was uh, at the moment the earthquake struck. Many of us, many Americans, really didn't know much about Armenia back then. Through that tragedy, though, through that earthquake, we learned a lot about the strength and the resilience of the Armenian people. In many ways, in many ways, that tragedy, the earthquake, renewed a 100-year-old bond between our people, between the American and Armenian people, founded on a common sense of humanity. This year, we will honor Clara Barton, the American Red Cross, and American missionaries for their tremendous humanitarian work that they did here more than 100 years ago. So my remarks today, I want to focus on three areas. First, the United States wants to help Armenia in its quest, Armenia's quest, to become a prosperous, democratic Western nation. That's first. My second point will be that we want to do this, we are doing this, by partnering, building partnerships with Armenians who share our values, universal values of separation of church, sorry, separation of powers, freedom of speech, rule of law, and the like. And third, we Americans, we believe in the power to bring change, the power of bottom-up change, with optimism and a bit of impatience, and we hope that Armenians do as well. The US relationship with Armenia, our bilateral relations, have come a long way since the embassy opened up in 1992. We are trying to help Armenia in its transition from a command economy and a closed political system in those early years to a more open system, a more open system that expands opportunities for all. Since Armenia's independence, the United States has invested more than two billion US dollars in assistance here. We also help where we can in non-monetary ways to promote regional peace and integration and to expand this important bilateral partnership. We've had some success in this area. 
But in every case, in every case, one thing has always been clear. Despite our strength as a nation and what seems like a lot of resources, we cannot, we, the United States, can accomplish nothing here alone. Wherever we've had success, the formula has always been the same. We've been able to partner with motivated, talented, creative Armenians with whom we share core values and who are committed to building a modern, progressive Armenia. Building on our previous humanitarian responses and assistance, our goal now, our goal now, is to bolster the efforts of these partners who share those core values. Now, I've mentioned several times now, I've mentioned uh, partnership, shared values, uh, several times in these remarks. And these are really easy terms to throw around, but they're really core concepts to consider as we think about the future of the U.S.-Armenia relationship. As we contemplate the next 20 years, the extent to which we have partners, Armenian partners, who share our values, will be the key determinant, the key determinant of our success. Shared values are the bedrock of true partnership and true cooperation. That's my main theme today, so I'm going to repeat it. Shared values are the bedrock of true partnership. So, how strong is this bilateral foundation? Do we have a solid basis upon which to build this partnership? A sense of shared humanity brought us together after the earthquake more than 20 years ago. But what values will bind us together now for the more challenging, uh, for the more complex challenges ahead? In his 20th anniversary speech, and we're about to come to the first quote on your list, in his 20th anniversary speech to the Republican Party, President Sarkisian said that Armenia must commit, and this is on your sheet, Armenia must commit to the persistent adaptation of European standards into all areas of our political, social, and economic lives with no exemptions or reservations. In February, the President repeated that these values were part of the Armenian identity and that Armenia was undertaking reforms based on these values. So European values, European standards, these really are now universal. They're universal standards, universal values. I welcome the notion that Armenia is building its future upon this foundation of European values, just as we did, just as the United States did. America's democratic experiment these past 236 years has grown up from ideas and values with strong European roots. Separation of powers, checks and balances in the system, freedom of speech, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, a constitutional system, and a commitment to the rule of law. These same values are the foundation upon which to build the U.S.-Armenia relationship over the next 20 years. If we can agree that our relationship is based on a common commitment to these core principles of democracy and free markets, then we have a real basis for meaningful and productive cooperation. In the United States, we've struggled long and hard to translate these values into reality. And we hope that experience will help inform and support Armenia's efforts to do the same here. Take, for example, this critical insight from the French philosopher Montesquieu, and this is the second quote on your handout today. Montesquieu wrote, Every man invested with power is apt to abuse it and to carry his authority as far as it will go. Our founding fathers, the founding fathers of the United States, is embrace of this insight has structured our system of checks and balances 
to keep our republic healthy. We fought to maintain the separation of power between the branches of government, checks and balances to guard against abuse, and accountability of government officials to the people. We, the United States, the American people, we invest great hope in our political leaders, in our political figures. But we have had the realism to structure our government to guard against the worst. Here in Armenia, these principles underpin our efforts to help establish democratic processes and institutions. That's why we support strengthening the capacity and the independence of the legislative branch to balance a bit executive power. These principles also drive our interest in seeing the new Ethics Commission become a meaningful check, a meaningful check on officials using their official position to advance their personal financial interests. That is, as a check to conflicts of interest. The principles also guide our advocacy for an independent judiciary that is not beholden to executive or private pressure. And finally, with the elections, the national elections coming up, these principles underlie our strong support for protection against electoral fraud. In the United States, our unequivocal support for freedom of speech reflects the sentiment of English political theorist John Stuart Mill, the third quote on your handout today. John Stuart Mill wrote, if all mankind minus one, minus one, were of one opinion, mankind would be no more justified in silencing that one person than he, if he had the power, would be justified in silencing mankind. Here in Armenia, this sentiment on freedom of speech translates into our advocacy for peaceful assembly, for protection of journalists, for the judicious use of libel and libel fines, and for television access to both government supporters and government critics. A level playing field and access to the media are critical, for all viewpoints, are critical for the upcoming national elections. In the US, our commitment to the rule of law reflects the wisdom of Roman statesman Cicero, the fourth quote on your sheet today. Cicero said, we are all servants of the laws in order that we may be free. Here in Armenia, to put this value, the rule of law, into practice, we advocate for protection of property rights, for a predictable and transparent application of tax and customs laws, free from outside interference, and transparent and fair legal proceedings. Again, in all these endeavors, Success is only possible where like-minded local partners in civil society, in the private sector, in government, take the lead to incorporate these core values into all areas of Armenia's political, social, and economic lives. With such partners that share these values, there is real hope that we can accomplish much together. Of course, not everybody, not everybody in Armenia shares these values. There are those who believe, as the President said, who believe in exemptions, usually for themselves, or who have reservations about reform and change. And some of these individuals have the power to block change, to block reform. It won't surprise you, it will not surprise you to hear that many Armenians with whom I've spoken express doubt that meaningful change is possible. They argue that members of the elite have fixed the game to their advantage and are powerful enough to ensure that reform will not threaten their private interests. From this point of view, Armenia is not 
on a steady evolutionary path toward free market prosperity and democracy. Instead, these Armenians fear that reform in their country is stalled and that as a result, real opportunity, whether political or economic, is reserved for the few. This model, they warned, will lead to small incremental steps, incre incremental reforms that are at best marginal and at worst counterproductive by giving the false illusion of progress. I think it's important to take this perspective seriously, in part because many, many Armenians do. This pessimism, though, creates its own problems, which lead to serious challenges for Armenia's development, for example, through emigration. The desire of some Armenians to leave their country shows that too many feel shut out of opportunity here at home. I do not, however, I personally do not share this pessimism or apathy about the prospects for change and reform here in Armenia. I'm an optimist, that's just, I'm just not that way, I'm an optimist. Maybe that's partly because I'm an American and we are a pretty optimistic bunch. Like many Americans, I believe in the power of individuals to shape history. A great quote from American anthropologist Margaret Mead typifies this belief, the fifth, the fifth quote on your, on your handout. Margaret Mead said, never doubt, never doubt that a small group of committed people can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. I know there are brave, patriotic, committed Armenians with the power to change their world. Some have official titles, some work for NGOs, some for universities, some for businesses. Some may be sitting right here in this room with us today. To the extent that we, the, we, the United States, can use our resources to help their cause, uh, we will. So I understand this concern that incremental change, small incremental change is not enough. I understand that many Armenians are impatient and feel that the pace of change is too, is too, is too, uh, too slow. I understand that. Maybe that's too, because I'm an American. We're rather impatient our, as well. President Obama often quotes civil rights activist Martin Luther King, and this is the sixth, not sure how to show six, sixth. Uh, quote on your, on your handout today. Martin Luther King said, we are now faced with the fact, my friends, that tomorrow is today. We are confronted with, a fierce, with the fierce urgency of now. The fierce urgency of now, it's a compelling and powerful phrase. We should all feel that fierce urgency. Some impatience is a good thing especially if it can be channeled into a force for positive change. But impatience can also be debilitating if it slides into apathy and cynicism. Those who express frustration with the pace of change often follow with the statement, they know what they need to do, where they are the authorities or those in power. According to this view, they, the bosses, the leaders, have the whole burden to make changes. They just need to display the political will to do so. Political will is important. Yes, it really is. But political structures cannot be built on the assumption that those with power, those in power, will do the right thing. It's great when we do. We call that leadership. But building a sustainable, sound democracy rooted in these time-tested values requires sweat and effort to construct accountability mechanisms, checks and balances, to ensure that government serves the people and not itself. Consider the upcoming national elections. I understand that there is some serious skepticism out there. In a recent poll of about 1,500, 1,500 Armenians conducted by the National Democratic University, 
it showed that only 12% expected the next elections to be free and fair. 12%. Now, we don't need today to assess whether those doubts are well-founded, but I, what I want to do today is to ask how people who harbor those doubts, what should they do? How should they respond? Should they leave everything to the authorities? Or worse, should they give up on the possibility of change? For example, some have preemptively declared the May elections fraudulent and are calling now for protests the day after the polls. But those who want to build democracy in Armenia can't stop with statements about what they, the other guys, the leaders, should do. Instead, Armenians should do their part to build institutional networks and coalitions to make their voices heard and to establish and utilize mechanisms that deter fraud and hold government accountable. It's those institutions, those mechanisms which endure. They are the bricks and mortars of democracy. It's hard work. It's hard work establishing these structures. But we applaud those courageous, committed Armenians, both inside and outside government, who put in the hard work to build and strengthen sustainable democratic structures. And we, the United States, are eager to partner with them wherever we can. Before closing, then, let me repeat again my three, my three key points. First. The United States wants to help Armenia in its quest to become a prosperous, democratic, Western nation. Second, we do this by building partnerships with Armenians who share our values, those universal values that we've discussed today. And remember the principle that shared values are the bedrock of true partnership. And third, we, we Americans, believe in the power to bring change, the power of bottom-up change. And we hope Armenians do too. For those of you here today, thank you very much for coming. But I also want to give you a homework assignment, if I may. I ask you that you delve a little more deeply into these European, these universal principles that we've talked about today. Study some US history. Study a little, a little bit of European history, and indeed study your own history. Think about your values, and think about how those values intertwine with our values. My hope is that many of you will find that we have much in common, and that we want the same things for Armenia. The next 20 years belong to you, belong to Armenians. I hope some of you, indeed I hope all of you, will commit yourselves to the difficult work of building a prosperous liberal democracy here in Armenia. And I hope that you will look to us, to the United States, as a partner and as a friend in that effort. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your comments and questions.